Welcome to a yeast shootout. Today we have two yeasts that we're pitting against each other. We have the Red Star Premier Cote de Blanc versus the Red Star Blanc yeast. Let's get started. All right, so if you haven't seen these before, this is a series that I do on this channel where I take a single mead recipe and I use two different yeasts. And essentially I pit them against each other to say which one works better for this recipe. The recipe is simple. It's a traditional mead using orange blossom honey. It's on the screen right now. And um, I try to keep close to the same ABV. I have a whole rules video that I'll link down to. This one bent the rules just a tiny bit. So let me tell you the differences between these yeast and then we'll talk about the process. All right, so Red Star has this really nice PDF for each one of these yeasts. So I'm just gonna read off of it. Um, this is a, the, Red, the Premier Cote de Blanc is a fast, regular fermenting strain that is good for low temps, which is nice. Has an alcohol tolerance of 14%. It does have a um, temperature range, which honestly, that's the one thing I don't see on here. I'll find out what the temperature range is and put it up. Um, it is low production of foam, so low foaming, so it doesn't, uh, it's not too vigorous in that regard. It says very low vol volatile acidity in sulfur compound production with adapted uh, nitrogen contribution. So when given nitrogen, it's not going to get a sulfury compound, which is good. It is a, um, it presents fine fruity aromas and this says this strain respects typical varietal aromas of the grapes. It's all about grapes on here. And it intensifies primary, primary aromas. So, um, oh, last thing, with a good nitrogen supplementation, Cote de Blancs can also produce a high quality of fermentative, fermentative aromas that value wines obtained from neutral grapes. And it's for Chardonnays and stuff like that. Anyways, so this yeast is, this is all about wine. It's not necessarily for mead, so I apologize. Um, but that's why we're putting it to the test. Now, let's switch over. This is the Premier Blanc. So the Premier Blanc has an alcohol tolerance of 16%. It is low vol volatile acidity and acid... I can, it's so hard to say. Acid... I, I believe it's acetaldehyde. Acid, acetaldehyde production. Not a scientist. Um which that is a compound you don't necessarily want in your brew. Good resistance to low temperature fermentation, um, low nutrient requirement, and this yeast strain confers body and roundness thanks to its high glycerol gly production. I cannot talk, I'm so sorry. It promotes the development of fresh and clean aromas. This is for Spark, um, excellent, excellent for the production of white thermo regulated and sparkling wines. Okay, so, and that, I'm sure it has a temperature range, I'll find some around here. So that's some information about these. We are going to now talk about what I did. All right, so here's what I did. I took a, I made a two gallon or about two and a half gallon batch of must with my base recipe. So each gallon you see here has 3.3 pounds of honey in it. It started off as one and a quarter gallons and then after sediment came down to one gallon. Um, it has each prospective yeast. I gave, for nutrients, I, I, I gave them both one teaspoon of Fermate O, which I know is not super scientific, but I gave them both the same amount of nutrients to be fair, as fair as possible, and let them start fermenting. I mixed them up, let them go. Uh, racked them off of that and I took my Gravity readings, of course, our starting gravity is 1.085. After the primary, both of them are at 1.000. For the sake of this test, I keep these dry because uh, I want to get the truest test possible. So these are both dry. I have them both done here. It's been two months since they started, so they're not super old, but they have enough age to say, we can do a test. Um, they're not super clear. I think that's that's okay. Obviously, time will probably change that. Luckily, I don't have a lot of headspace here, so I will be able to let them sit for a while and maybe even do a taste test again in the future. 
Um, all right, so let's go ahead and I I'm gonna do an unofficial review first. I'm just gonna do some tasting back and forth, give you some notes, and then I have an official review. I have a paper that I do and I will rank or give a winner. On my right side is the just Premier Blanc, and on my left side right here is the Cote de Blanc. So let's get some aroma checks. Definitely still has a little booziness. But the, the orange blossom bright floral notes are popping, which is really nice. Yeah, it's got a really nice rich fruitiness and sweetness on the nose. It smells good. It definitely has a little booziness though. That's gonna be fair for this. Um, they are both sitting at about 11%, so I got some time. Ooh, okay. It's super similar. Yeah, these noses are almost identical. There might be, no, I was gonna say there might be a little more sweetness found in this one, but they have the same orange blossom citrusy notes and sweetness and floral aromas and booziness. The noses are the exact same. Interesting. All right, well, let's taste them. Go back to here. Here's the Blanc. That's some high quality honey. Body's a little weak. I didn't do anything to adjust the body on these, so that's gonna be typical. It's not oaked or anything like that. Yeah, the, um, it's definitely got, the body's weak, but it has like a pulling tannin. Like it's very moisture wicking out of my mouth. Um, the, the, obviously not sweet, it's dry. The noses has some sweetness to it, but. So I'm getting a faded, like the honey has not retained a lot of its aromatic or a lot of its floral side on the actual taste. You get some essence of orange blossom honey, um, but because of the dryness and the fact that it's still got some booziness that I'm fighting against, it is it is a little bit, it's not super um, apparent. I do think though, it's got like at the back of the palate after it washes a little bit, it does present more of that fruitiness but the initial taste has some yeastiness to it. I mean, we're not super clear. So I've racked it over a couple times and it has some heat that is distracting. But the, the, the base value, if you got rid of those little components, I think that the honey character could pop through and the yeast have presented some of those fruity esters that uh, I want in here. Okay, so let's switch over to the Cote de Blanc. Whoa, that is a bigger body way more um wine adjacent i would say in that the tannin found in this this has a little more perceived tannin it's kind of clinging but as far as base flavor goes this has um, a little more juiciness to it meaning that i'm getting fruitiness from the honey and like a little stronger fruitiness from this honey it also has a uh, similar bite a little less yeastiness, I would say, than this one, which is interesting. Yeah, this one is presenting a little more floral, a little more honey character in a way that's nice. Does still have the flaws of yeastiness, and that just comes with age. But I think it's, this one, a little more, is more enjoyable for the moment. But let me give an in-depth review and go from there. All right, I'm back with my official review of these. Now, I try to do these to give a uh, one to help train my palate because one day I'd like to do something more and maybe do BJCP certification and just be more official. So these help me, but I'll show on the screen kind of my notes. Um, I'm gonna start with the Blanc since that's the one I started with. Uh, color and appearance, both of them are hazy in the same regard. So that's seven out of 10. Um, no legs really on either. The Cote de Blanc was, I gave a six out of 10. And I don't know, there's something about this one doesn't have as, it's got a little more, it could have just been the pour. So I could have docked it more, but six out of 10, they both have the same haziness in there. Um, nose bouquet, 12 out of 10 for the Cote de Blanc and 11 out of 10 for the Premier Blanc. Um, and they have the same 
nose, but I did notice that there's a little more muted note to the actual coat that I did Blanc. And I kind of like the more muted mellowness there. It's still bright, but it has a little more mellow ing. Flavor wise, 11 out of 10 for the Cote de Blanc and nine out of 10 for just the Blanc. And uh, I was getting, like the same on the nose, I was getting less bright floral notes coming from, from the Cote version than just the Blanc. And so I, uh, I kind of enjoy, personally, I enjoy the more muted, still floral, fruity-ness you get from it, from the taste, but it wasn't as, as bright and punchy in your face. Finish, eight out of 10 versus set, uh, six out of 10. Uh, it's a little more smooth. The Cote was a little more smooth than this one. This one has, it's because of those bright notes, I think it has a little more sharp edge that doesn't quite round off as well. They both still have yeastiness. I wanna make that apparent. That's not like I'm ignoring that. I, that is there. Uh, so, uh, Honey Character uh, was seven out of 10 versus six out of 10. They're both apparent and nice. But again, the warming side, the, the Blanc has presented more bright floral notes, which is not a bad thing. Personal preference, I like the, the more mellowing, but still bright floral notes. And last but not least, mouthfeel body, eight out of 10 versus seven out of 10. And that's mainly just because this one has more tannin, has more of a wash, has a, has a, or has less of a wash, more of a clinging kind of tannic value that is, makes me want to come back. Um, so overall, the overall scores were the Premier Just the Blanc was 46 out of 70 and the Cote de Blanc is 52 out of 70. So the winner of this shootout is the Cote de Blanc. Only by a little bit. They are very similar. And I'm really <laughs> tearing them apart, trying to um, see what I can get out of them. So that's the winner. Of the two options, if you're battling between the two, which one do you want to use? I think you should use that one. Now this is just personal preference, so please do not sit there and, and yell at me. Some of you have probably like one more than the other, naturally. So I did one extra thing in this video. I haven't done it before with another uh, one of these. I took, after the yeast were done in each of these, I just took the yeast slurry, the what was left of it basically, dumped it into a, another container, repitched new must on top of it, and fermented. And it was a combination of these two yeast. Now I don't, with them being so similar, I don't know that there's gonna be a big difference, but let me get that brew. All right, so here's my mixed version. It's obviously younger, and had to be, logically. The original gravity of this one was 1.065. It also finished dry, 1.000. Uh, so this one did start at a lower ABV, but that's okay. Let's see what this one tastes like compared to the others. Mm. Nose-wise, I feel like Ooh, yeah, this one, it's probably just because it's younger, but it doesn't have, it's almost lost a lot of that fruitiness. There's definitely a little more yeastiness to this one. Hmm. Yeah, a little more yeasty. Got some heat, which both of them did. Interesting, I'm not... These are, it, this is actually different than these other ones. And it could just be the age factor, but I'll never have them be the same age. It does have the same tannic value. You're still getting like a clinging bite, but it's lost a lot of the floral side. And I'm wondering when you reuse yeast like that, if those yeast maybe in conjunction with each other were kind of battling in some way. Yeah, this one does not have the same floral fruitiness. It's missing the brightness kind of leaning towards this uh, Cote de Blanc version, which is more mellow. But I'm not a big fan of this one, I'll be honest. Um, it does need age, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna toss it by any means, but it does need some help. So, it's interesting. This has been this yeast shootout. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Of course, there are other ones on the channel. It's been a little while since I've done one. I've got another one still in the works, so stay tuned for that. But I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll be back with more of these and other videos in the future. Make sure to hit like and subscribe and do those things to support the channel. And I will see you in the future.